ProWrestlingSheet.com Welcome everybody to this week's edition of Collider Body Slam Smackdown Live Recap. I am back from the dead. I had bronchitis. I was ill. I've been missing all this stuff. Oh, that's, talk- you, that's where you bronchitis? Yeah, man. Oh, I, I didn't realize that. Couldn't talk about any of the pay-per-views. I was going insane all weekend. And now I'm back. People are like, where's Roka? Where's Roka? Well, I'm back. I'm excited to talk about uh, SmackDown Live with my man, Ryan Satin. How are you, Ryan? I am stressed out, <laughs> Roka. I am so stressed out. I put up a story. Like, I was literally like, I was prepping a story to put up about the Elite and this all elite wrestling show. Yeah. Tra- you know, that that the trademarks kind of like leaked out about them last night. And I put up everything that I know about what's going on with the promotion. And I put it up and then the site goes down. And I it's not down, it's it's like it's just not going fast. It's going yeah. very slow right now. Um, the beach ball of death. Yes. Yeah. The, the the server is working on it. I'm getting updates, uh, which is why I have my computer here in front of me, because <laughs> I might have to be responding to them while trying to get the site up, but I didn't want to wait too much longer, because the holidays are here. We got to yeah. get the hell out of here. Uh, <laughs> and I got to get back to working on this stuff. Anyway, so I'm stressed. I apologize if I sound more stressed than usual, but I usually sound stressed on yeah, here. Yeah, well, so. you got a lot of stuff going on, dude. That's <laughs> part of running things, that's part of it. Yeah. You know? It's a great line in uh, Miller's Crossing. Running things, it ain't all great. <laughs> uh, let's start off here. Uh, you, we're recovering from the pay-per-views over the weekend. Survivor Series, clean sweep for Raw over SmackDown. I don't know why. Except for the pre-show. They, except for the pre-show, right? I don't know why they booked it that way, but they did. Yeah. It seems like a weird choice. Is it because SmackDown Live is doing better in the ratings? Because it's better, uh, a better show than Raw? What do you think it was? You know, What's your overall feeling about that? My, <laughs> I was thinking about it, and like honestly, my overall feeling was just like a... I mean, those people did make more sense to win at the end of okay. the day. Okay. Okay. Like for every match. I, well, beyond minus off, well, even authors of pain. Yeah, like, yeah. They needed it more than the bar did. The bar's sure. fine. Bar's without established. It. You know, yeah. they're established without it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I really didn't think that. Like at the end of the day, I was like, yeah, I get it. They, 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 okay. The Raw had the stronger. Like Brock, Brock's obviously going to be Daniel Bryan. Right. Like, right. like uh, you know, uh, Rollins beating Nakamura makes sense. He's one of the top people in the company. Yeah. Like uh, the Raw team was stronger than the SmackDown team. You know, the both sides, female both sides. And male. Okay. You know, um, yeah. So I, I really Ronda okay. and that thing. You know, that was didn't count. So right. well, technically, you know, she DQs. It. I mean, we thought Ronda was going to win the match anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I think it made sense to me. I mean, like it was weird, but I I did feel like I saw people making a bigger deal about it on the internet than I thought it was. Mm-hmm. Like people were like, oh, you're in LA, the Fox execs are there. They're yeah. like, oh, and this is how you see the show that we just paid all this money for as the losers of the, sh- of the, right. of the company. But I just don't, I just don't see it that way. Like I don't, I, to me, it's like it's all serving of the of the story, yeah. you know, and none of it really like. I don't think anyone came out of that show looking bad. No, I, I agree with you. And one of the people that came out looking good to some people in the WWE universe is Charlotte Flair. With that, what you just mentioned, that Ronda Rousey match, she starts out this SmackDown Live, it, it, you know, on the mic, doing her bit. Um, look, I I have a lot of opinions on this, a lot of feelings rather about this. I'm confused about what's happening here, and I see it all over the internet. There are people that are are definitely praising Charlotte and what she's doing, call her the queen, all that kind of jazz. But there's a lot of us on the other side going, wait, she's basically doing Becky Light, Becky Lynch Light. And that (coughs) is super frustrating for the rest of us because we're like, wait, is this what this meeting that you were talking about earlier uh, uh, on another show, is that what this meeting was? That they were like, we're going to move this whole situation over to Charlotte now while Becky is in uh, doctor jail. I don't understand the concept of turning her into an S. These lines coming out of her mouth were the same lines that Becky could probably say, but way better. I, I still don't think Charlotte cuts the greatest promos. Becky absolutely has, has like eclipsed her on that side since she became a heel. So you're watching this whole thing, and she's talking about it, and I really enjoyed it, and I loved it. So I'm just confused, Ryan. Maybe you can clear this up for me. Maybe I got a foggy head. Maybe I can't see it. I'll What's be, happening? I'll be honest with you. I was I'm I was agreeing with everything you said right there yeah. because I was like watching it thinking the same thing like while I was watching the the I guess turn yeah. you know quote unquote turn uh, at, at Survivor Series I was thinking are they really just gonna try and ma- just like are they really gonna try and like push that momentum on to Charlotte yeah. is that what the hug was was supposed to do is that what this is supposed to do right. Um, 
is, is that what's going on? And so, yeah, I was frustrated about it, too. I was thinking to myself, like, well, let's see what she does on SmackDown. And then I felt the exact same way while watching SmackDown that you did, where it was yeah. like, well, I don't really want to see Becky Light. Like, it's clear that they want to add that same edge. Yeah. But it's just so, at this point, it's just like, it's just so obvious yeah. that they want, you know, it's it's not, it's like we, there's this, this thing that everyone's behind. Right. And they're like, well, we wanted everyone to be behind this thing. So right. what if we just have this thing do what this thing is doing? And hey, y'all wanted that one to be a good guy? Let's just have her be a good guy again. Like, right. that does concern me a little bit. Yeah. Um, it was funny, too. I, I don't know if you saw, um, <laughs> that I like that that Becky Lynch has been um, has been communicating through her bio. Yeah. On on That's Twitter, have you seen stuff. these? Yeah. The one. Yeah, I saw the one. The recent one. She's like, is Charlotte gonna put on er- orange hair? <laughs> like call herself the Woo Man? Whoa. Yeah. Or she said, just changing this again to see if Charlotte changes hers too. Bet she does. <laughs> and then she did that, and then like. When she did that one, a little while later, it's an update. She did. Oh. <laughs> so, so, so good. So was, what's what's the point of this then? Because is Becky is Becky kind of running rogue a little bit here? Because she even went back at WWE, their official Twitter account. Went to champ versus champ? Yeah. Or, or, or when she said, what did she say? She said, yeah, I'm not the one you planned for. I'm not the one you pushed, to, pushed or got behind. Well, I hate to break it to you. This is the way it's going down. So it's confusing to me. Are they letting her just kind of do whatever she wants to do on this side? Because they know it builds up the fans. Or is there some kind of like, is this all talked about ahead of time? That's what my concern on this situation is. Because it feels like Becky is like coming at the WWE and Charlotte, and it felt like Charlotte was going, now wait a minute, I don't want to be like cannon fodder for Becky's rise. So do something with me, and I wonder if maybe this switch to giving all this stuff to Charlotte now is uh, is a way of making it up to, to Charlotte Flair, to, because she's a Flair. That's kind of, I mean, to be honest with you, like, she's I, legacy. I mean, I was, you know, rewind yeah. to when Becky turned heel, and I was saying like, hey, if we don't boo Becky... Yeah, we might get fucked, yeah. you know. And I do think that, like, I don't, I don't know that right now. But I right. look at this scene, like, man, if they were like, well, we need someone who's getting heat, who's yeah. getting booed. We need to have Charlotte get that. Then, like, I get worried in that regard that, yeah. like, they're gonna, tr- you know, change Becky Lynch a little. bit. They're gonna change things a little bit yeah. to kind of like, oh, you wanted to cheer, yeah, for Becky. Well, now we'll. But it's like, man, she was so good at being a bad guy that I right. hope that's not the case. Right. And it seems like, well, and she came up against Paige in this uh, promo and was saying like, oh, you know, Paige said, you know, five cop, you shouldn't attack five referees or five, uh, yeah, I think she said five refs, there's no reason for that, blah, blah, blah. Then uh, 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 Charlotte, uh, then uh, um, the Iconics came out and confronted Charlotte and did their bit, which was funny. I thought their bit was really funny. Uh, then they got in the ring, but then Charlotte immediately was like, "It just who's going to be Ronda Rousey?" Now all of a sudden she's the one talking shit about Ronda Rousey. It just seems so not genuine at all, not organic, not real, and it seems like they're trying to shoehorn her into this situation. And I just don't see what the end result is here. I get the four horsewomen versus the four horsewomen, but are are they all going to turn face slash heel like Austin? People are not calling, calling saying she's Triple H that Flair is Triple H. And, okay, I, and, get, I get that comparison a little more than Austin. Right, right, and that because uh, you can't really Becky look at like Austin. you can't because you can't really look at Charlotte like an anti-hero. I don't think she no. could ever fit into that role. No. She's more of like a flair. She's more of like yeah. She's either a villain or she's not. Right. Um. So so yeah, I I, I get that. I, I I you know, I I, I this whole pa- I, I do you remember like when. Becky initially turned, and it was like, well, maybe she'll get different reactions. Yeah. And it was in like, different places. In different yeah, places. Yeah. And it kind of did, but right. it's been all over the place. You know, since then, I, I have felt like we were living in this like bizarro world. Yeah. You know, like this weekend, you know, we kind of talked about it, Jamie and I, yesterday, but, yeah. you know, the whole like booing Ronda Rousey and like the na 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 goodbye song yeah. was like confusing. It was like weird, you know, and it's like, you know, there's this weird disconnect right now of like where the fans just want to cheer who they want to cheer for mm-hmm. and they want to boo who they want to boo for and they don't really care what the storylines are yeah. and it, it does create this like weird disconnect that I don't really it makes it difficult to watch almost I guess I, for me I like it because it's the fans speaking because they have a right to f- speak they paid for the tickets they're there they buy the merch you know what I'm saying they've got a right to say what they want to say <laughs> would you say that same thing mm-hmm. 
if 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 the people in the crowd at like a sitcom taping were booing during jokes? Well, that's different, right? Why? That's, that's a sitcom taping. That's what's the difference? They're TV booing shows? during the jokes. Yeah. No, because they're told ahead of time. Uh, please don't uh, uh, don't upset the performers. Don't do this. Don't do that. They're told ahead of time before sitcom tapings start wh- how they want the audience to react, and they accept that people are coming, and th- they don't pay those people. It's it's there. It's a trip. Uh, like it's people who are you know they're given free tickets exactly, and they're entertaining their family or friends coming into town. And they're watching. Ta- you're getting the privilege to watch a sitcom taping, whereas this is a sporting event to a degree. You're paying to go, so you can boo and cheer forever you want. Because at yeah. some point, at some point, I just you I can I, only I, manipulate so much if you're paying for the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I guess the way Jamie and I were talking about it yesterday, yeah. and maybe you disagree, but it's like you know when. Like when I go to Disneyland, for example, I, and yeah. I apologize for those of you who already heard me use this analogy yesterday or Jamie when we were talking about it. But like, you know, when I go to Disneyland, for example, and I'm on Indiana Jones, yeah, I'm like going along with the ride. Like I'm like, oh, Indy, ah, right. fire, oh, you know, or Jamie right. was saying like when he's at Universal, uh, Halloween Horror Nights, like he's not yeah. actually scared. You know, he's not like scared, scared, but he plays along. Like he, right. you jump, you freak out, you, you go along for the, for the ride. Mm-hmm. So... To me, like, you know, it would be equivalent to similar to that of, like, going on something like that and being Mm. like, oh, I see the strings there. Or, like, Uh, oh, flashing your light on, like, the thing that's holding them up so it's clear that it's fake. Or, like, that's how I look at it. Or, like, Mm -hmm. but but maybe I'm, like, obviously I look at it differently. Uh, I hear what you're saying. And and having worked at a theme park like Universal Studios, when those fans and and guests come in who make fun of the rides, make fun of what the people are doing, scoff at people in their costumes who are just trying to entertain and get paid so they can pay their fucking rent, those people are assholes. Those people, male or female, they're assholes for doing the shit they do, especially when they get to the drinking and they get to late at night and especially Halloween Horror Nights. You can get some of the worst crowds in for Halloween Horror Nights. They'll say some of the meanest shit. They'll say some of the most inappropriate shit because they think they can. I get that. I, th- I think the wrestling thing is a whole nother animal because – the uh, the bookers have let us down so much for decades that fans feel like no we know better do this and they don't go on with they don't go along they don't listen to the fans i think the fans wouldn't be so willing to rebel and do these kinds of things if the wwe would be like okay we get it you want daniel bryant we'll make it happen for kind, daniel bryant kind of like how that doesn't you don't see that happening in nxt right because there's they are fan serving yes and I think they don't do that. I mean, they go, no, we wrote this out. This is the way it's going to go. Well, no. Why don't you adapt and improvise? That's your job. Yeah. If the fans are cheering for Becky more than Charlotte, hate to break to you, Charlotte. Ain't your time. It's Becky's time now. We're going to go with Becky. That's how it works. And so it's frustrating to me to hear the, the frustration from uh, fans about the situation. But I also get what you're talking about and what Jamie, I imagine, agreed with you about. Yeah, and I, I get and, that. And I don't want to say that I don't think anyone should be allowed to boo or you right, know, right. boo. I get it. I know that it is similar to a sporting event. You know, I think for me, it's just like, like I enjoy it more. Mm-hmm. It's similar to when I go to PWG. Like I'm like, I feel like the fans are trying to enhance the show. Right. Like I don't want to like try to make their jobs more difficult when I'm in the audience. You know, and I right. feel like some people don't feel that way. Like they want to get them off their game. You know, and well, so it's this. It's it, there's definitely people going for different reasons. Yeah. Do you think it's not genuine though? I think people are turning on Ronda. That's genuine. I think that's happening. I think it's mob mentality. Like I think really? it's like similar okay. to Roman Reigns. Like people started booing Roman Reigns, so everyone just started booing Roman Reigns. Okay. Like, I don't think. But don't you think that what happened with Cena was organic? People were done with it. People were sick with it of it, and so they expressed it this way. I feel that that's what's happened with Ronda. I feel people are. Uh, but and but I, so I, I told you this was happening. I know, but it was. So, I, mm-hmm. I, I get. I get the like Becky versus Ronda thing, and I do think that it was not. That you were gonna that obviously putting her up against Becky in this in this moment right now was gonna get yeah. her booed. Yeah, I was just more surprised at like the extreme nature of the booze. Like it was it was intense when yeah. she was getting booed. Like I was I was surprised, really yeah. surprised. I'm still surprised that like people are like so much booing for her. I don't think Rhonda can handle it. I don't think so either. As a person, and I'm not saying this in a negative towards her as a person. I, it feels to me, and you see that clip where she's going back at a fan and saying, "You're not, you're not a, you're not a man, or you're not, you're no kind of man." 
she won't handle this well. Like she does. She doesn't have a history of having shit go wrong for her, and she deals with it with grace. Yeah. She does not have the history of that, and this is a whole other animal. And yeah, you can learn how to fight in the ring. You can learn to wrestle, all that kind of jazz. But going, but dealing with fans turning on you or switching on you, that takes time in a ring. That takes time, and that's what the wrestlers learn going from the indies all the way up to the top is fan reaction. You've got to roll with what the fans are doing, and she doesn't. She didn't seem like she's happy with it. But I kind of blame the WWE with this. We should talk about this too, Ryan. Why would they make Ronda be the butt of both uh, of Becky Lynch's stuff and Charlotte's stuff when you're trying to pre- you know promote her as this top thing? I agree. It was it was it's odd booking. And then the only thing that makes sense is if they do plan on bringing up the four horsewomen yeah. and making them like a heel stable and like letting Ronda have li- letting Ronda be a bad villain, I guess. Not yeah. villain, but have more of a heel edge to her. But I just feel like it's too early for that. Yeah. Like we have we we I feel like we need the face run first before we get the Hollywood Ronda Rousey, you know? Right. Like, we need the Hulk Hogan run first, yeah. you know? And so... But who's the heel here? Is it Charlotte it's confusing or Ronda? It's very confusing. Right. I And I think that's why the reaction the past week in Los Angeles were so varied. Because mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of people know. The only thing everyone knows is that they hate Nia Jax. Yes. That's, that's, out of all oh. of this, there's only one... Universally accepted thing amongst the fans yeah. now. That's like F Nia Jax to all of them because yeah. man, she's got massive heat. Yeah, yeah. and it's dangerous heat. Yeah. It's not that normal heat that you get. Her looking at her fist that way, like you ruined something fans were really looking forward to. It's dangerous for you to play with fire like this. And I've heard like she's the people backstage are very unhappy with her. Like other yeah. you know coworkers oh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, she has, this, and there's been no repercussions, from what yeah. I understand. She and got she, pushed. She's from a it. history, yeah. And so <laughs> she's gonna. Try, they're probably gonna bring Becky and have her fight, uh, Nia in some kind of cross thing as well, or some something. Uh, but I wonder now, and this, and I'll wrap this up here, uh, Ryan. Do you think that one Becky or Charlotte needs to leave uh, SmackDown and go to, to Raw? I mean, I do think that it would be helpful if. Yeah, I, it would be helpful if one of them did. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think that. You know, to be honest with you, with so many injuries stacking up, they might need like a superstar shakeup sooner than later because mm-hmm. it's like the 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 rosters don't feel very equal. Not equal. They don't feel balanced is well, a better word well, for you, it. And you get that in the Survivor Series match. You could see that there. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It, it, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, you know, I'm interested to see. I mean, honestly, in general, 2019 is going to be very interesting because, like, yeah. you know, this story we put up today with the All Elite wrestling thing with you know all these new signees with the fox deal things are popping for 2019 i'm very interested to see where they go and i but i do think i i do think that yeah i do think that it's a little scary uh all right well anyway charlotte defeated k by pinfall and then of course she attacked them outside the ring uh and uh so she and then she defeated royce by disqualification um uh, so anyway, yeah, so they, they cheered for her and everything like that, and we'll see how it goes down the road. Uh, next, we got Miz going in the ring to talk to Shane McMahon. This is also kind of weird. It's almost like a dad with his, I mean, a son with his dad trying to convince his dad to fight with him. Uh, and then he brings out these lame two guys to, 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 to wrestle with them. And those lame two guys end up pinning Miz, which is a little strange when you do that with one of your top stars. Uh, so I don't know where they're going with this because Shane was like, I can't fight. I, you know, I've got my injury. I don't want to do this. I'm the chairman. You're one of the top stars. It would look like conflict of interest, blah, blah, blah. Um, but do you, do you I, mean, I liked the back and forth. I enjoyed that. But did you like, did you like this at all, what they're doing with him? One shout out to Eli Everfly, who is the wrestler who pinned the Oh, Miz. okay. Um, LA so- SoCal guy. Okay. Um, Eli Everfly, I like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he wrestles on all the shows out here. I was shocked that he got a win yeah. over the Miz. I don't know if maybe they need like a new Ellsworth now that Ellsworth is dealing with all this <laughs> underage penis pics drama. Whoa. You didn't hear about this? No. Whoa. Oh, Jesus Christ. You didn't hear about this? What now? Dude. What? What is wrong with this guy? There's the basically this girl came out saying like a, like a 16 year old girl came out saying that like he was sending her like what? A, like he was sending her like uh, adult rated oh, content. Jesus. And then he put out a statement denying it. <coughs> um, but it's 
go look into it. It's some pretty wow. telling stuff. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think we'll be seeing a lot of James Ellsworth anymore, <sighs> especially in WWE. Uh, so... I was like, maybe they need like a new small guy to be like a kind of like a, a thing that they joke around about. <laughs> they had that funny name. What was it? Uh, Lane Bryant or something. Yeah, like, that? like Dane and Wayne Dane and, yeah, Bryant or yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I didn't. <laughs> I, I I don't like someone like the Miz losing to just some random no name wrestler. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not saying. I'm talking about the context of WWE. Right. I know that Eli Everfly is not some no-name wrestler. I'm talking about, you know, Dane Bryan or right. whatever his name was, you know. Um, the Bryant brothers. The I Bryant brothers, much. yeah. I know that much. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't dislike it. You know, I think to answer your question, though, as to where it might be leading is like we've got heel Daniel Bryan, which we'll discuss his promo mm-hmm. later in the show. But, you know, I, I – from – those were, I, I couldn't go last night. I, 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 I was gonna try and get there late. I just got so tired from yeah. all the shows. I, Kevin just went by himself. My co, my you know former co-host from does best of the rest, but or not best of the rest. I'm sorry, a top five. But he, uh, he and Christian mentioned to me how their dark match mm. was Daniel Bryan versus The Miz wow. at SmackDown last night, okay. and that the way it all played out was Miz being the face huh. and Daniel Bryan being the heel that he's been portraying. Um, and that, like, he was playing up as a face hardcore, and that Christian was like, who used to work at WWE, yeah. f- said he's like, man, it looked like they were testing to see if that was a thing that Miz could pull off because he was like, the crowd was so behind him. If some of you, you can see it, uh, Stable Center tweeted the video of him. Okay getting the crowd, doing his promo, and getting the crowd all pumped. Right. And you're like, whoa, the crowd is firmly cheering for yeah. for The Miz, like erupting for The Miz, like you know, full face, full everything. And and Christian said he wrestled the match like he was a face, getting the crowd into him. And he was like, wow. man, I haven't seen the crowd like that in a long time. He was like, I didn't think The Miz could do it, but Miz is like a great face. Like, yeah. great, Miz could really do it. So maybe this is leading towards that in some okay. way of like a – Reversal of what we've seen on SmackDown this whole time, and now Daniel Bryan and Shane will be the heels with Miz as the face, which is a weird thing to think of. But How maybe ironic. that's where this is going. Maybe yeah, I could yeah. see that, right? Yeah, I could see that. How ironic would it be, though? Uh, Miz is the face, and Daniel Bryan is the heel at WrestleMania. That, I honestly feel fun. like that might be where they're going. Yeah, that sounds like a fun match. Actually, to see where it goes. I, I, I mean, I'm interested. I, I, <laughs> I feel like it's so. I mean, like. I don't feel like I feel like we could have had it the other way around still, and it would have been great. But yeah. I'm not gonna like dig my heels, you know. I'm not gonna right. like I'm not gonna be that anti. I'm I'm, I'm willing to yeah. open my eyes to it and seeing the crowd reaction of the Miz um, in that dark match. I mean, he really did get like a really big face reaction. So that's good. Um, and people seem to like the this new Daniel Bryan Kurt Cobain thing. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how he felt, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, all right, let's move on to the new day. Uh, they with some useless tag team match uh, with the bar there with uh, celebrating Thanksgiving, and of course the big show was there. Uh, people fell on tables. People got hit with turkeys. Uh, this was just to fill the time, uh, and it was you know nice to see the new uh, the new day win, but it it didn't advance this in any way, shape, or form. And uh, I don't know what it did. <laughs> did you like it? Well, I was gonna say it's cor- it's corny fun. Okay. Like I get it. They always do these for the holidays. Yeah, like yeah. whatever. You know. What I mean, like it may it made me laugh. Hey, Big Show went through a table. When's the last time Big Show went true, through a table? True. Like Big Show doesn't go through tables anymore. Right. Big Show's barely even around. And so you know, what? hey man, when will you get to see a grown man shove his hand up a turkey and then punch another man in the face with said turkey? You know, and Cesaro. Being covered in all the food and it's I a lo- good sport. And I love like when someone's like overselling stuff like yeah. that. I, I, I can't help but love it. And it's like I love when he's selling the fact that he's getting hit with food as if it hurts. Yeah, yeah, right. And he's like as if he's knocking him out each time, and he's like starting to punch the <laughs> air, and he was doing that whole thing as he was getting hit. And I, I, it was corny. It was fun. I, yeah. I mean, like it's not like it's mind blowing television, but it was fun. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Naomi, Naomi and Asuka took on Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Mandy. Um, 
I guess there's, <coughs> I guess they're really setting up the Mandy Rose Sonya Deville thing. Guess they're gonna, you know, because they didn't quite work as well this. Well, it's been a year now. Match. Yeah, they they put it out on their social media. Officially a year. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't work so well in this match. Oscar ended up getting the victory with Naomi. But uh, um, I guess they're setting this up because uh, Mandy almost kicked Sonya, or Sonya almost kicked Mandy in the face or something. Was it? No, no. It was Sonya. It was uh, Mandy almost kicked Sonya in the face. Yeah. She was like, oh my god, it was so close. Blah, and blah, then blah. yeah, yes. And then yeah, Oscar took care of business and then put her in the. Uh, Oscar lock. Um, what happened here? Is this a? Is it? Are these possible tag teams, or is this a setup for their for their rivalry here between Mandy and Sonya? I do find it odd that they would start to break up Mandy and Sonya when it feels like they want they're trying to stockpile teams yeah, so yeah, that yeah. there are competitors for the women's tag team titles. But um, I do think out of all the you know out of all the women in the company or out of all of those teams, mm-hmm. um, you know. Uh, Vince really like you know Vince loves Mandy. Oh yeah, and like he wants to he wants to push her as like a singles person. Mm-hmm. So so I I get it. You know I I totally understand. I totally yeah. get it. It doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah, they're giving her a shirt. She's got like she's obviously very beautiful and gorgeous, and she's getting better in the ring. So she's getting more opportunities. So it's it's all the tools are there. She's blonde. She's young. It's all the tools are there. Yep. And she's got a very strong social media presence. One year later. Yeah. Who do you think has had the better year? The the, the Absolution, formerly Absolution, hmm. or the Riot Squad? Riot Squad. Only because of the Paige issues. And eventually that was going to be a problem anyway. Paige was always going to eclipse those two. Totally. So in a way, they kind of got pushed a little um, ahead of schedule. So it's like you got you get an opportunity. What are you going to do with this opportunity? It's really important. What are you going to do with this opportunity? That's what you, we got to see from Sonya and Mandy. But I don't think either one of them has really grabbed the brass ring just yet. But they're building towards it, and we'll see how long WWE gives them. But certainly the Riot Squad. People love the Riot Squad. I agree with you. I think the Riot Squad is definitely the superior group of the two. Yeah. Do, Jamie, when we were talking yesterday about it, Jamie feels like it's time for the Riot Squad to split up. Do you? What? Do you, no. Right? It's way too early. That's what I said. It's way too early. I was like, they're finally like a feel. They feel like an actual oh, unit yeah. now. He's like, way what's left early. for them to do? I was like, win matches yeah, win finally. Matches, win titles. <laughs> I was like, like, what do you mean they haven't really done? Yeah. They have. They have so many things left to do. Okay, I'm glad you're with me on oh, that. Oh, totally. One. Because I do. We were both saying like, I do think that Liv has like really big potential as sure. a singles person because she does connect with like the younger audience. She does. Um, um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you're on the same page as me. Oh, yeah. And, I was and, like, too, way, way, way too soon. Yeah, and if this happens, if they go forward and they do what they could do, like if Riot, by some miracle in the, down the road, wins the wins the title, I don't mean miracle like she can't. I mean, it's been yeah, there's so many other people kind of in the way. If she ends up getting the title, what's to stop them becoming the first female free bird tag team type champions where they're like cha- taking turns about who's wrestling who? That would be fun. 100%. So the Riot Squad should never break up, honestly. They don't need to. They're great. Because once Riot, once Ruby leaves them, those two are going to disappear. They'll become the B squad, B squad all over again. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, I do think that they all help. They all help elevate each other. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And yeah, Ruby's just, yeah, you know, it takes time. Ruby needs, needs some more time. She, yep. She'll get there, though, no doubt. Because I do think that they'll. They'll get less time separately yeah. than they would as a unit. Absolutely. All right, uh, let's move on to this Daniel Bryan uh, promo uh, that he did in the ring, declaring the Yes Movement dead, even though there are Yes placards on the belt, ironically enough. Uh, this was an incredible promo. He talked about himself in uh, multiple persons. Uh, he, he went back and forth about what he wanted to do, uh, to what he did to AJ Styles, what he, he thought of the fans, uh, and then him taking on Lesnar, um, and then declared himself the new Daniel Bryan. Uh, a lot of people are liking this uh, post uh, post SmackDown. Did you like it, Ryan? I didn't love it, to okay. be honest with you. All right. I mean, I hate to say it, but yeah, it... it, it and, and look, at, I know that I've already been down on the Daniel Bryan turn. Right. I just feel like, you know, like, it's just interesting to me how, like, everyone else gets shades of gray. Yeah. <laughs> but Daniel's the one who's the full-blown heel who was hating the fans while he was in these hyperbaric chambers yeah. and resenting everybody, like, just so opposite of what we, you know, know and what would even make sense yeah. in terms of that. Like, he's... I don't know. It, it Why bring the fans into it? Yeah. You can be a straight heel without the fans. And it's funny, too, because like I see everyone praising it. And then it's like, 
But you all were so mad yeah. when Becky Lynch did the exact same thing. Yeah. The exact same thing. Well, she can't she can't insult the fans. We've all clearly been there with her. And it's like we've all clearly been there with Daniel Bryan yeah. for much more vocally for oh, yeah. five years. Long like so I was a little I was a little confused. Um that being said, like I do like the edge, you know, I do like I liked him saying uh that like Daniel Bryan like basically like beat the yes out of him like beat yeah. the, beat beat the like happy go lucky Daniel Bryan out of him finally and that's why he was so happy afterwards. I mean I like that. Mm-hmm. Can't not like that as a wrestling fan. Like yeah. as a wrestling fan, you go like, oh, right, that's pretty good, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I didn't. I personally don't enjoy it yet. Right. I'm sure it'll grow on me, you know. Um, but. I understand why it's being done. You yeah. know, I I, mean, yeah, I, I get it. You yeah. know, and I, I and it, it is interesting. It's not like it's not interesting. It's just like it's hard for me as like someone who likes believable television to like grasp the concept of like the, yeah. the, the things he was saying. It's it's interesting because like someone put it up on Twitter. I can't remember who it was, but they said they don't like where the character's going. Give him a heel turn. Ambrose, Brian, Becky, Charlotte. Now. Some of these characters, they're just giving out heel turns like uh, Oprah giving out cars. And it's like, well, what, what's the end result here? Uh, I hope this is the beginning of an interesting new um, series of promos. Because Daniel Bryan, has he ever got to be like a full heel where he wasn't like a maniacal crazy guy like with the team Hell No and other things? Like, like where he wasn't goofy, you mean? Yeah, where he wasn't goofy. Like if he could be a straight heel, straight angry heel – Doing things in certain ways, you know, I I would be interested to see that. I just don't think he needs I don't think, to bring I, the fans I think it's always it. been I think it's always been the goofy right? version. Yeah, I think yeah. It, well in WWE, not not in like Ring of Honor, oh, right, right, right. Like yeah, but, but in, in WWE, yeah, yeah. That's what I'd like to see then. If this is a new page, but did you get that vibe from this promo? Because I didn't. I got the vibe. There's a new approach to it. I, I got the vibe that vibe. Is goofy. I didn't get any goofy vibes from him. Just like. Talking in the third person to himself in the corner. Well, that's Stone Cold, isn't that? That's like that what situation. I guess, but it's like, it, I guess I'm just really gonna have to like try to yeah be a little more uh, understanding of a radical change to Daniel mm-hmm. Bryan. It's just like I love Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Like Daniel Bryan's one of the people who got me into wrestling again. Like, so it's, it's, like, it's hard for me to grasp, you I know. You. Yeah. But but at the same time, like yeah, like you said, I I, I get. Uh, you know, if it's gonna lead to like a more tough Daniel Bryan with an edge, yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. But I just, I don't know. I just like feel like they're taking like this inspirational person and making you not like him anymore, and taking yeah. this inspirational story and kind of like spitting on it. Kinda, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. That that certainly feels that it certainly feels that way, right? And so that's why the WWE. Maybe more so than any other change in a character recently has to be like completely tone perfect, note perfect on this uh, uh, heel change or heel turn rather for Daniel Bryant. Because if they start putting him in the, with that counselor or they start doing the psychiatry thing, any of that bullshit, they're going to take away the power of the heel turn. Agreed. And so it has to be, if he's going to be straight heel, he has to be straight heel. And there may even be stuff with Bree. Like there's certainly possibilities there with Brig Bree herself turned heel with the best, so they could be like yep. a new heel kind of couple doing the things that they're doing because they're tired. Because maybe Daniel was mad. See, that's the way you do it: is Daniel being mad at the fans for turning on Bree. That's how you do it. I'm in the hyperbaric chamber and I'm thinking about all these fans who supposedly were on Bree's side, my side, and they want Bree retired from wrestling, want to fire from wrestling. What is this bullshit? I thought that I, I thought they were maybe gonna go yeah. there. But I'm kind of glad they didn't. I don't oh, really? Know, I don't know. But I that would like, be more believable to bring the fans in. Yeah, no, it would have. But like, they're also they're not going to bring someone getting concussion to like the forefront of a storyline, are they? Leukemia's in play here, son. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess you got a good point there. <laughs> That's a very good point. <coughs> they broke. 
Jim the Nightheart glasses. Yeah, but you can't, yeah, but you can't sue <laughs> sunglasses. Yeah, but like a former talent, like like Roman Reigns can't sue saying like WWE caused me to get leukemia. Right, right. They can go out and be like WWE caused me to get a, a concussion. concussion, and then they made a joke about it on TV, and it became a story. So I feel like that's uh, where that's, fair. that's what I more what I meant right, by that because right. I feel like it opens them up to that kind of a thing, you right, know. So yeah. that, that's more, that's that's more what I'm thinking. I guess that's a good point. That if line. they'd sign all the contracts, make sure nobody has an issue, but you know. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. You know, and and, and, and with the women, most yeah, of all, yeah, yeah. the women, they really don't talk about their injuries a lot. Yeah. It's weird yeah. how, like, they don't like to confirm, you know, the, yeah. the injuries of, of the, the, the women wrestlers. Yeah. Because they're trying to encourage, I think it's too, in my opinion, and I may be way off, but in two, I think they do that for two reasons. One, they don't want to discourage women pursuing wrestling because they see this now as a growing market. And two, I don't think, I think they want the women to retain this feeling of toughness with the fans. That if they're getting injured all the time, maybe they're not as tough. True. I guess you I can see. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, what, right. you know. I, and that actually, you know, that does make sense because I've noticed, just as someone who covers mm, this kind mm. of thing, I've noticed that they, a lot of times, don't confirm the injuries of scary wrestlers either. Right. Like male wrestlers. Yeah. Like most male wrestlers, they'll be like, oh, he's injured. They'll, they'll, they'll do a story about mm. it on .com or something like that. For the most part, they'll right. like, they'll confirm or whatever, you know. Um, but I've noticed like women and scary wrestlers, they don't do it with like the Wyatt family. Yeah. They won't say when the Wyatt family is out with injuries. Like no. right now, they they haven't said Eric Rowan or mm-hmm. Luke Harper or Bray Wyatt where the hell they are. Yeah. Yeah. No one said anything on those guys. Yeah. Like, and you know, I've heard, you know, Luke had that picture. He was like in the cast or something mm-hmm. like that. But I've heard it's an additional injury that's actually keeping him out of the ring. But it's weird how they, they, they mask that kind of thing. Yeah. But actually... To be honest with you, that's the, that's the first thing that's the first explanation that's ever made sense to me. What yeah. you just said right there is yeah. that like they don't want to make you think that, that person's not tough. Yeah, I, I, and the, I mean because the fans already like some of them will go after the female wrestlers saying, "Oh, it's just like it's sideshow stuff." And that makes sense. So you want to, yeah. So. No, that actually really that, that actually is the first time that some I, that's like an internal thought I've always uh-huh. had that I've never really said to someone else. So that makes that's a good that that makes sense. That's what I do. <laughs> and I get in trouble for it sometimes. All right, well, last match of the evening was Randy Orton taking on Rey Mysterio. Are we already at the last yeah, match? Yeah, I think a, so. Is there anything else? I don't think there's un, What an un... <laughs> like, what a boring episode of SmackDown we've had been so far. It kind of was boring, man. Because the Charlotte's promo was like three commercials. Charlotte's promo was... I saw someone <laughs> tweeting... Like so long. I saw someone tweet saying... You've got the Fox executives probably in the front row, and you gave the first half hour of the show to Charlotte. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, and yeah, I, and that, you know, I get they had to get Charlotte over in that opening segment, but it was a lot. It was uh, a lot. It was a long, a lot. But at the same time, like, they had a lot of stuff the past few days. They've they had, they had a lot of wrestling right. content they've had to put out the <laughs> past few They're days. Like, they probably take a rest for a while. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, is there nothing? Is, is there no? You know, the only other thing no. that I feel like that I that I, just off the top of my head that I yeah. can think of, and I'm sure maybe there's another one, is Glimmer of Hope for Lars Sullivan. Oh yeah, because they haven't said where Lars Sullivan is gonna be yet. Right. But they did hashtag like the tweet raw. Yeah. And then they played a vin- his vignette during raw. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, well, they hashtagged it raw. They played the vignette during raw. Clearly, it's during raw. But then they, but then they did it on SmackDown last night. Yeah, they yeah. played a vignette for him again. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. It almost leads me to believe, and this is just a total guess. Sure. This is just pure speculation. But I'm wondering if he's going to debut in the Rumble instead. Ooh. And that's where we find out. Almost oh, like yeah. like a Kurt, uh, 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 Taz. Was it mm-hmm. Taz who debuted in the Royal Rumble right like that? Yeah. Like they threw the, they played those vignettes for the leading up to it. Even though they didn't say it was Taz, like they've outwardly said it was Lars Sullivan. Um, I kind of like the idea yeah. of maybe him going in there and going deep in the Royal Rumble. We need a new monster. That's a good way to like get a guy over. He comes in and just like mauls people out of the match, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh my god, this guy's a monster! Right. Look how bo- behemoth!" You know all that kind of stuff. And then, and then we can figure out where you know he goes from there, and yeah. kind of like whoever he gets, if you go from that direction. But, but that kind of seems like a yeah. decent idea of where to go with him, right? Yeah, I agree with that because he's got to be on SmackDown. Yeah, he doesn't make sense on Raw. No, they already have Braun. They don't really have like a monster and Lesnar and Lesnar, yeah. and to a certain degree, Drew McIntyre and the AOP. So it's like they 
I feel like on SmackDown, there's they are in much more need of a monster yeah. giant type guy, you know. So um, yeah, Big Show can't do it no more. No, no, and no I offense. no, but I really feel like he could fit in there amongst all those people. Like the you know, he could be a good he could he could fit in the mix well. I think. Yeah, I don't disagree. Uh, yeah, so the Randy Orton match, uh, Rey Mysterio match, that was uh, from 2002 <laughs> that we were watching there. Uh, I mean, look, it was a good match. It wasn't a bad match. I'll just These say, guys, like, can, they're professionals. They're veterans. It's the same thing like I was just saying with the Charlotte thing is that like, yeah. they, except I'm going to be a little more rough with it here, is that is that they, they did a lot of tel- a, a lot of content in L- in Los Angeles yeah. with the same crowd for the most part not all of it but for, for a lot of it yeah. a lot of people were probably there throughout the whole time and like i feel like i thought they were going to end with like a bang yeah. they were going to give something like a big like okay you stayed here for the final show like you put all this <laughs> you you came here every night we're going to go off with a we're going to we're going to leave you with a bang yeah. and granted they did for the live audience the they match. did the dark match yeah. but television wise i feel like they 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 could have done it. they they I don't know. They could have done something a little better for to end the show, just because yeah. it's like even the people watching at home, you've dedicated a lot of time to, yeah. to WWE well, in the I past, was... yeah, to like watch all their content. And I just felt like you know the match itself, it wasn't bad by any means. They're mm-hmm. veterans. They're, they're going to put on a passable match. It was just like not exciting. Yeah. Um. I did, however, think that that RKO to, on the outside of the ring was maybe up there for one of the coolest RKOs yes. that he's ever done. Like. That was so cool. Like th- that that was such precision. I mean, that's one of those times where you go like that's why people praise Randy Orton as yeah. one of the best of this generation because he's just so crisp and you're like, "Man, that was good. Yeah. That was good." You know? <laughs> so, like I like that a lot. Um, and I did like his vicious streak of taking off the mask yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, that was cool. And using the chair, put his neck in the chair. Yeah, getting Ray Mysterio all bloodied up and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. So, um I I I I hope that there's no intentions to take his mask off anytime soon, yeah. though, because I not need it. Yeah, we learned our lesson. We in did WCW. that already. Yeah, we we learned it. <laughs> we don't need Devil Horns, no. Rey Mysterio again. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants a return of that at all. <laughs> what was that group called? Did you the? the uh, oh yeah, look it up now. Ah, uh, WCW, Rey Mysterio, <laughs> Conan. Billy Kidman, I'm gonna be so mad. It's the uh, yeah, what's, uh, yeah. filthy animals. The that filthy was animals. That there was you it. go. You filthy animal. We don't need a. F- Although Billy Kidman's in the company still, Ugh, so you know. Yeah, Imagine him it. trotting out in the jean shorts. In the jorts? No, not needed. Him and John Cena together as a tag team in jorts. Did he? He's like retired, retired, right? I think so. He made some kind of comments though on social media recently about with people coming back and stuff. I can't remember what he said, but he was he was certainly active. Uh, all right, so that's our. Um, uh, oh, he did retire. Yeah, yeah, he did officially retire. That's our uh, Body Slam SmackDown Live recap uh, of this week. What did you guys think of what we had to say? Let us know in the comments section below. Do you like the Charlotte uh, slash Becky Lynch uh, uh, cosplay that's going on uh, with this uh, situation? Do you like the way they've moved during this? Do you see this as setting up Four Horsemen versus Four Horsemen? This is kind of their steps towards it. Uh, or do you not like it? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, uh, what you enjoyed about this show and uh, what you see the storylines, pl- how you see the storylines playing out, and especially Daniel Bryan's Daniel Bryan's promo. Um, Ryan, where can people follow everything? ProWrestlingSheet.com is the website, uh, at Wrestling Sheet on all social media. If you want to watch the video of this recap, YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. If you're already watching the video, thank you. I appreciate it very much. But yeah. while you're there, please subscribe. Uh, you know, please hit the like button, leave a comment, let us know what you think about all this, like Roka was saying, um, share, all that good stuff. It really does help out. We're almost 7,000 subscribers now. I'm Woo, really happy about that's that. That's awesome. Yeah, we're almost there. That's Jeez. like a big jump from when we, that's like almost like five, I think that's like, yeah. since I came here like extra five, since I started like actually seriously doing the YouTube channel, like an extra mm-hmm. 5,000 jump up. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy. We're chugging along to 10,000. So please keep sharing those links. Uh, please keep helping out. It helps us, it helps me out, helps us out, helps Collider out, helps yeah. everyone out. So please, please do that. Uh, also, if you're watching the videos and sometimes you don't want to watch, you just want to listen while you're driving, go check out the podcast is podcast one wrestling sheet radio that's where all the audio content goes uh please check that out and while you're there like i said subscribe uh you know leave a review leave a leave a rating all that good stuff 
it helps us out a lot. Thank you. That's awesome. See, there you go. Do all of those things. I did them. 7,000. Once we get to 10, I'm going to ask Ryan for a raise. All right, thanks, everybody, for watching. You can follow me at the Roka Says on Twitter and on Instagram and see all the stuff we're doing on Collider Sports. Go to that YouTube channel. Go to the Collider Sports podcast feed and, of course, all the regular Collider video content. Have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy the time with your family and your friends. And if it gets too heated in there for whatever reason, get the hell out of the kitchen. Go outside. Take a, take a walk in the fresh air. There's no need for fighting. There's enough going on in the world. Have a great, relaxing time if you can this weekend. All right. Talk to you next week on Collider Body Slam.